Not a bad little offering from Pamoli, but Rob being a professional bush crafter, your initial thoughts, we'll just put it up. That was, that was fairly easy to, um, to put up. I thought Pamoli was like some Italian recipe, but, um, <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> but, um, I quite like it. It is, yeah. It's, it's, what I, um, what I uh, thought was um, it's quite similar to a, a one Tigris that I've got. To be yeah. fair, which is, it's like a, a one-man version of this, but you've basically got more space. I think the one Tigris one is obviously I would take that hiking or something. Yeah, but it's, it's more a base camp, would you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would sort of get out the car, you know, right to the camp sort of job. Um, what was it? Well, how many? Two point two kilos. Kilos, yeah. It's not. It's not the latest, but yeah. it's not. But even the one Tigris isn't that. Uh, the one Tigris, I probably would you know, wouldn't take on that far of a trek. Um, that's about 1.3, 1. 1. I believe. Yeah. Not entirely yeah. sure, but um, I did take it on a longer hike and I sort of regretted it. So, um, with something with other kit. The stove jack there for you. I like the annex, the little... That yeah, so you've got so loads of, obviously you've got loads of space for your gear. Um, obviously, it's a one wall tent. Um, yeah, I see that. So, one wall versus like your two wall tents is always like that condensation issue. But I'm I'm like a, you know, I'm a tarp guy. Yeah. So um, usually I'd you know just sleep under a tarp. But with a tent like this, I'd probably just keep it open pretty much, um, unless it's really pouring. And, and even at that, I'd adjust it as best as I can. So like if, if it was really pouring, I know I've seen people put like a bit of a, something in the middle here, prop out with a walking stick, or yeah. um, you can guy these out a bit lower. So you could probably like, you know, you could take that down. Yeah, and then you could guy that out. Oh yeah, yeah. You the could guy that a bit lower, give it a runner. You could even go a bit lower, keep even using the same stick, and then you've got that runoff yeah. like that there. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I've, I've sort of seen done before and I think that's quite, or you could literally just peg that, you could guide that out straight without the, without any sort of a stick and the water would just run off that nicely and you're not going to get any rain in there and you obviously just keep the end open that's, you know, yeah. the more protected end basically. But it's quite nice that you could actually still do that with this stick, just adjust it in that way. Yeah. Um, I quite like how there's three entrances. You have an entrance through here. Yeah. An entrance on the opposite side, and this one, yeah. huge side entrance. Yeah. I mean, and two man, possibly, well, two I, man with gear, very, very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, two man with gear, very, very comfortable. You can, like, I think this is quite a nice touch. Um, the one Tigris. It's like a windbreaker or something. Yeah, but, you know, it sort of, it gives you that, even if, even if the rain's sort of driving in that way yeah it still gives you that bit of protection there as well about rain it does give a hydrostatic head of 2000 which is pretty yeah which, yeah yeah when you consider like a van Gogh banshee 5000 yeah as their base you know yeah that i thought was a bit disappointing um obviously all the tents the um guy lines are all dead on as normal but we got the um i thought 
you know, this is quite a nice touch being able to put a ridge line on as well, yeah. if you've got no poles. Um, just a centre tie off is there that you can sort of yeah. adjust, gives you a bit more space. That's quite nice. And then you've got your venting down here. But, it's the whole way along, isn't it? Yeah. There is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like I say, I, I, I have no, look, you know, the one, I'm sort of comparing it a little bit to the one Tigris because it just looks really similar, but like a, a bigger version. And there was always the condensation issue, especially being like a one wall. But like I say, uh, that's, you know, if you really have to be that enclosed, which I, I personally would never be. You like for your, yeah. yeah it would, like that would, I'd say if I was camping, this would never be closed ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, I would probably have the sides closed and that would just be the entrance there, and basically. This, obviously, they can be yeah. the, the lifted up. Yeah, it's got like these, yeah. you've got, yeah, you've got quite a lot of these sort of like flanges, Rain. flanges yeah. being... Rain flange or rain yeah. peak type yeah. thing, yeah. So there's I mean, quite a lot of um, little features that way. Um, looks too, not too good, not too, sorry, not too bad. This looks good, actually. Yeah, I mean, you could, you can see here it's all right, but, you know, Bit of yeah, a little bit no, of fray, but nothing too. So that's only on a bit of Velcro, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's nothing that's too bad. And then the, uh, yeah, that's probably a bit, bit soft, like you said. You need a footprint, definitely. No tarp yeah. underneath it. It does seem quite flimsy, doesn't it? Yeah. Obviously, you've got a few, like obviously a little toggles for rolling your, your mozzie net up. There's a little hook there. I think that's just for like tying your. Those two side doors back. Yeah, you got yeah. your side door toggles. So uh, in the winter, you can have your heat from your stove coming right through. Yeah. Well, it's going to come through anyway, but in the summer, you're not certainly you're certainly not going to have your stove in on the summer. But certainly the mozzies will keep the mozzies out. Yeah. You can have this flap open and that down. Yeah. Little passport pocket there, um, <laughs> or smartphone pocket. But yeah, it's not too bad to be fair. You use, certainly with your cooker in there, even if you use your the like of the uh, Outbacker stove or the Pomali range of stoves, which yeah. the titanium ones, the fold away ones, which are excellent. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic price too. <laughs> but they're obviously purposely built for this here uh, line of tents. Yeah. Uh, you can actually put wet gear, etc., on a little ridge, and you know you're, you're going to get wet gear dried out reasonably quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's especially... Very, it's going to be very warm, it's going to be nearly overkill, I would say. Yeah, especially if you've got, like, if you have your little outbacker in there, the little stove, you'd def definitely be able to dry some kit in there as well. So if you give it an out of 10 for oh. an all-round score, what would you say? I don't really do out of 10s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm either 30, 50 or 70%, that's my... Right. No, um, I don't... It's, that would be hard for me, actually, because I don't... It's, it's, it's something I would actually never ever personally use, yeah. um, but I mean for the price, um, you price know, I suppose I'd probably say about a seven to eight. Seven to eight. That's yeah. not bad actually. You know, but it, but again, we, I suppose we haven't sort of looked at it, set up. We haven't tested, it. We haven't tested, tested it properly it. yet, so it'd have to sort of, in an ideal world, we'd, just, we'd probably just put this out. Probably you'd put it in your garden. Let it yeah. ra get rained on for a day. Have a look at it. And have a little look. It's only put up very roughly. I mean, it's not uh, tensed and dyed. It's just it's just freestanding at the minute. Well, it's just up at the minute. It hasn't been. Yeah. It's probably hot. just. Yeah. It's just another probably another little video sort of a, an after. This is just initial yeah. setup. I might take it out very soon. Give it a test yeah. run with the the wood stove in it as well. Yeah. Go down to County Kerry. But like I say, but if you're not bags walking. Are in, mate. Yeah. Bags are in. Yeah. Loads of room. <laughs> yeah. No, I do. I, 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 it's a palace for one, two. Very, quite comfortable, you know. But yeah, like again, it's just. I think it's for the, you know, the, 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 the you know, you're driving along in the car, or you got your van, and then you're going somewhere nearby. That's yeah, what it's. Yeah. I actually quite like it. Yeah. I actually quite like it. Decent colour. I would use it. I would definitely use it. What do you think, Dan? Being a Viking man. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not used to it. I'm used to canvas tents. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're hardcore. Sleeping in the dirt. <laughs> hardcore. So it comes with, does it, it's got, there's no, um, um, it's got all the pegs obviously with it as well. All um, the pegs, yeah. You could, you could, another thing that obviously we'd noticed, you could take it with you without the poles if you wanted yeah. to lighten it a bit. Um, you could use um, 
your walking poles with that and yeah. those you could just get some sticks so like you could because it's fair the poles aren't that heavy no, but they are no they're the wrong length no it, all, all it would be is just reducing bulk and and again if you're if it's more like get out of the car to a camp sort of job then yeah. there's no point really getting rid of the poles is there so um i think if it's 2.2 you're not is it you're not really getting rid of that much yeah. with yeah. Get, getting the poles down Quite like it, you know that? Yeah. Like I, re I really like it. It's just the floor is the only thing that lets me down. The floor is a bit yeah. limited, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're quite right. Yeah. Yeah, they could have. a tarp underneath that to save it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm all I do a footprint with it, but certainly a wee tarp underneath that there, just, just to save the floor. Yeah. yeah imagine just leaning on it, and if there's a rock or something, you know, and you're pushing down your knee, it could you have to come through. Or off before you get in. Short breath. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, keep it all, get it all nice. I say it's just roughly put up for a, not a review, just an overview. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, the view, sure. The view when I have it out a few times, you know, in the wet, the wind and the rain. I say, it possibly could be a noisy tent in the wind. Yeah, well, again, that depends, like, how you um, guy it out as well. I mean, it's sort of, it's quite loosely set up now, you know, just to, I get a feel for it really but yeah um so seven seven and a half from yeah. rob dan what would you give it you don't get much for a hundred quid these days like no <laughs> no what would you give it out of ten i, I, I would give it a seven or an eight seven but eight. i would yeah. like to test it in the rain first yeah i mean if yeah, if yeah, if, exactly. if that's the thing like the you know if if you had that out in in a day or two of rain and it's Important rain, it's dry. I mean, that'll bump it up to like an eight yeah, or nine, yeah. wouldn't it? You know, so I'm not giving it very much credence for waterproofness at 2000. I mean, nah. it's bare minimum, and you can define le uh, legally that's the bare minimum, and you can say it's water something's waterproof. Yeah, 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 mills, hydrostatic head. If it was four to five, yeah, uh, I don't know, could prove me wrong. I might have to do a neck wax. We were, we were not trying to prove you wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll see how we'll see how it fares in the the county Kerry Pamoli. weather. Yeah, yeah. Nice one. All right. All right. Cheers. So it's like 0.8 of a kilo. Let me see if I can that's for the whole tent. Yeah, that's the whole shebang. Yeah. It's this 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 boy here. It's the DD. Let's see. I've looked at a, quite a lot of DD stuff, you know, and I quite like their tarp tent. It's a wild expensive yeah. for what it it's is. It's a super light tarp tent. Yeah, it's 134 yeah. quid. Yeah. yeah, but compared to MSR, and it's lighter. It's 734 grams. Jeez, that's, that's nothing really, isn't it? Yeah. The MSRs were all around the one kilo mark, maybe 1.2. Yeah. So, yeah. like, for me, that's what I'm looking at, but it's it's a really nice... Um, the MSR is a good brand, yeah. Um, let's see, it's that... You've probably seen this anyway. It's that one there. Seen it, yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. So, that's the one I'm probably going to go for. That's a track and pull job. Yeah. But yeah. I would take them anyway for long distance, you know, and you could use sticks. What's your tincture based on as such for medicinal purposes? So, well, the, the, um, do you remember that? Do you ever remember the turkey tail fungus? Yeah. Quite, it's probably no. one of our most common ones we get here. Turkey um, tail? Turkey tail, yeah. I'll show, you, I'll show you in a bit when we get some, some light. It'll probably be in the morning. Yeah. But, um, well, this year I made the... Um, I made the supplement, so I break it down into powder, and then I put it in the gelatine like and capsules. What was that cure for? Or so it's for? it's autoimmune, uh, not autoimmune. It's immunomodulating. So what that right. means is, it brings your immune system up when your immune system needs to be up, and then it it takes it down if it's too uh, too active. But also, it's used as a cancer treatment. And it's also used to. Um, if, if people, like in Japan, they would use it for um, uh, 
uh, if people are going through chemotherapy, it takes away the symptoms of chemotherapy. Right, right. So, um, but it's very good. You can actually eat it. Almost people would have eaten like a chewing gum, but you can make tinctures out of it, or you can make like um, hence the whiskey. Yeah, for the, yeah. the, the high yeah. volume alcohol content That's for it, the tincture. Yeah. For the tincture, yeah. yeah. Very good. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's it's, it's really good because it's common. You pretty much get it all year round. Um, I would say you could make like a tea out of it as well, um, but um, like I say, I I make the the tincture is probably the easiest thing, and tincture is probably generally an easy way to 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 make your medicines because they um, easily absorbed. Easily, yeah, exactly. Oh. Flick over. So those bad boys looking like? We'll see. I like my medium anyway, but they're, they're spot on. Nice. They're good to go. So, dish off out. the plate and I'll dish, you, I'll dish you up. So you have started, the, well, you've I've always keeping yeah. a bushcraft journal for... I've always, title. yeah, I mean, it's something I do, um, it's, it's really predominantly for habit yeah. reason. Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's bushcraft. I'm, I mean, yeah, bushcraft is like a little segment of what I do. I'm sort of, I'd say it's more sort of naturalism. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, yeah, I do, I do. But the the way that I would say a lot of people talk to me about keeping journals and or people want to do it and then, you know, they might not or the time thing. But for me, it's um, the way into it for me was weather law, like old weather law. That's the reason I do That's it. That's like sort of so weather clouds, laws, it's, rain. It's, yeah, but you know, look trees, looking at spider webs, you know. Spider webs. Yeah. So if you you know, a good a good telltale sign is um, if you see like long spun spider webs in the mornings, it tends to be a, a sort of a nice day, you know. And then there's certain flowers that we look at that are very pressure sensitive, like um, the the um, the scarlet. Um, Scarlet Pimpernel, which is a type of flower, not not out of Blackadder, by the way. <laughs> no, it's a proper flower. Um, so the Scarlet Pimpernel. So you know, it, it, it's also called the poor man's barometer. So that's sort of. So a lot of stuff, um, but it's not just like old weather law. So like a, a, a thing that I would have used, say for example, when I was um, when I'm running like expeditions and stuff, I have like a, an old like an altimeter and I've got um, some different plants so, lichen at certain altitudes yeah no, no but like I use some, some old like old school stuff this is a barometer right oh yeah yeah barometer but we would use these for altitudes but it's quite nice to have one of these like I try and obviously I'll gauge pressure based on what I see but it's nice to be able to confirm it so that's how you sort of advance a lot so with the barometer, it's actually, you know, it works as a barometer or like a, an altimeter as well, so you can read like altitude. So obviously, in places like the Himalayas, I'd, I'd always have this on me yeah, to, yeah. To, to, to sort of check altitude. And then I've just got uh, an altimeter as well, just for, um, that's just a cheap one. So you can measure wind and temperature, but again, I don't actually use it as a sense, oh, I've got to take note from that. It's more of a confirmation. It's a bit slow because... If you put it out, say, and it says 15, you need it out to sit out for 10 minutes, really, and it'll get to maybe like 12 degrees or something yeah, yeah. like that. So, but what you, what I'm kind of doing there is, I put it out, leave it without looking at it, and then I'm sort of in my mind, I'm going, you know, it feels like 11, and then I might check it, and then maybe if it's 12 or 11, I'm like, yeah, yeah. dead on that. Way. But that way you can really get a feel for temperature and also you're sort of reconfirming stuff which sort of advances. So it's a good learning tool as well doing it that way. So, But in the, the journal basically, the, the, the weather's probably the, the thing that, that, you know, it's a bit like if someone went running, you know, and they wanted to get to, into running in the mornings, they might not be able to do it just off the cuff, but they might be able to do it if they were really interested in fancy running shoes. So right. that might push them out, or it's like someone might get into bushcraft because they like knives, or they might. So, with the journal, it's the weather that gives you the little spark to sort of do the rest of it. Yeah. So yeah. to write, so it just starts you writing. Um, but like I say nothing in here would be worth, 
you know, it probably wouldn't be that interesting. Some it's just yeah, it'd be interesting to a lot of people. <laughs> it's it's just for for the habit. So for for basically, obviously, date, and then I have, you know, I have a little sort of um, primary thing. So like, what if I'm running a course? I'll just write down I'm running that course on that day, where I am. I'll have the weather, sort of a quick, you know, overcast, mild, yeah. like something along those lines, or if it's like a a 50 50 sky blue cloud do you yeah. name the clouds or anything do you yeah yeah so then i have the wind so i use um the wind i use the buford wind scale if you've no. ever heard of that oh That's, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah so i use that um i use that uh, um back in my navy days that that that's a very good way to sort of judge the, there's a sea version of that right and then there's a land so at sea it goes by sort of like the waves and and stuff like that whereas in land um it goes by sort of like the swaying of the branches, how the leaves move, and then it goes into like the scale, like up to 10, obviously. But, you know, most of the time it's, you know, even here, it sit at a one or two, you know, yeah. unless it's... Yeah, yeah. Um, then I have precipitation. So that's basically your percentage. It's the same as if you was looking at one of the Met Office apps, they'll give you precipitation. What percentage? Just, I don't, obviously, because I'm working with like old weather law, you know, like red sky at night, all that jazz. Uh, my my percentage would be like I don't have it really to the so if it, if I would put down say thirty percent chance I'm pretty much thinking it's not gonna rain right, right yeah. and if I'm putting seventy percent yeah it's probably gonna rain and then fifty obviously fifty fifty so I keep it like that then obviously temperature and then I've got the moon so the moon I would judge by sort of full moon first quarter you know um, waxing waxing gibbous waxing um um you know um, cre crescent and then yeah moving through the uh, the moon cycles the there cycles, yeah. um and then this is a thing so obviously for me one of my favorite things uh, wildlife things are, are birds. birds yeah um so another good way to get really sort of te keyed in with that is just quite simply i, I have like a bird of the day so because i'm always up early and i walk through the woods early there's always things that will just grab my attention on that day every day it could be something different it could be a buzz i could see a buzzard like have a fight in midair yeah. you know or i could so i'll be like oh bird a day's a buzzard because that happened yeah. do you know what i mean or i might see um you know a lot of the time so i'll see like m most mornings i'll see missile thrush singing so um but that doesn't always go you know if I have, or, or I have a woodpecker so it always depends on what's going on in the woods you know or if I'm if I see something quite unique you know I've seen some some quite unique birds recently um, so they'll go in and then I'll put a little a little dip yeah. next to it why I put that bird in you yeah. know yeah. potentially um, then I'll sort of have my I'll have a sort of weather observation and prediction thing and that again is sort of like a bit of weather law, but also sort of natural sort of instinct. So I'll look at stuff like say the spiders webs. If the birds, if certain birds have been ground feeding, that's always a bit of an indicator for, for good weather, you know? Ground feeding? Ground feeding. So if I've seen like say some 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 blue tits and great tits or like some, some uh, <laughs> pun, pun. Um, but no, if I see even robins, um, blackbirds, thrushes, if I see them sort of low ground, quite a lot of activity, that's sort of something, or if dew is down, so if there's like a lot of dew down, because most people will know if, if if you've got dew down, it tends to be quite a good good sign for, yeah. for good weather. It's the same as fog. Fog's usually a sign of, you know, weather, that, to, come, we, weather to come. So fog's usually, um, again, it's, we it's old weather law, but it's usually a sign of, you know, a nice day, because it will just burn off, do you know yeah. what I mean? So those sort of things will go in, and then I'll, I'll sort of, um, I'll put in, I'll sorry, I'll put in my clouds in that as well. But at the other, it is hard to beat a pair of great tits, you know, you see them oh, yeah. on the ground, you know. Oh yeah, 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 no, no, um, great tits are, are definitely, great, yeah. one of, yeah, I think they're most <laughs> naturalists' favourite great tits. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, as my, um, 
as one of the great um, bird authors, Simon Barnes, his name is, if you ever get a chance to read stuff, he says sometimes it's a bit tricky about writing some of the birds because <laughs> when people Google them, it comes up to up to different things. So, yeah, don't Google great tits. Yeah. Um, always a lesson to be learned. Um, so, so, yeah, so I'll do like a bit of a, a, a prediction, observations. So I'll do like a self-prediction for the day. Yeah. Sometimes, if I can, maybe a bit of a longer term, and then um, sort of towards the end of the day, I'll, I'll I'll write down an outcome of that prediction if I was close near uh -huh. enough. Percentage way how are you? How close are you? Um, normally, but 80, 80, 90 percent, I'm right. That's most pretty of the time. good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. Sometimes a little bit off, you know. I can That's better than the Met Office. <laughs> well, the Met Office isn't wrong. I'll, this is what people don't. Um, so a lot of these apps and these weather, the, they they don't get it wrong, but their um, their weather predictions aren't very localized. They're very general, broad. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. then, like we get very like weathers can be really localized. So yeah. that's why um, you know, because I'll get people say, oh, I've looked at my app today, and you know it's going to do this and this, and I'd be like, oh, I wouldn't be too sure, and I've actually but sort of um, been yeah. been right, you know, um, and that's it. And then literally, it's just a couple of lines maybe of what's happened in the day um monthly stuff like I'll, I'll even write a bit of old weather law in as well just because what happens is writing always and people know writing jogs your memory doesn't it, it yeah it, 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 it does a lot of that sort of stuff so um it's always good to sort of have that um i mean i'll draw stuff in there if i've got something quick i need to think about i've had an idea it might go in there but generally speaking it's just all that stuff these become more interesting when I'm sort of on an expedition, obviously. So, like, I've got some of these from, like, you know, spending weeks on track trails in Nepal or yeah. in the Andes and stuff. So that's when they... But all this is just every day here. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but a good one, say, let's see what we got here. Um, so if you come to the start of a month, so as you know, in like weather law and a lot of um, you know, ain't in old ways, our old ways, there's there's a moon every month, yeah. There's a moon, there's a tree of the month as well. So like every month, that will start off. So I'll write that down and it it jogs as well. So like, so just for example, here for Feb, start of February, you've got the tree of the month is Rowan. Yeah, and that's but that's only until the seventeenth, and then after that it's ash, and then ash will move over into March to sort of mid March is March, and then that will, um, and then that moves along as well probably. Um, full moon, the the moon in February. Do you know what it's called? Wolf. No. 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 Um. Close. No, go for it. What is it? It's the snow moon. Snow moon. It's the snow moon. Yeah. Um, wolf moon, I believe, was was, was 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 January. Uh, we'll, we'll see here. January's. Um, My moon app, it actually howls when the, the wolf moon. <laughs> Where are we? Is that January there? I usually have it. But there, do, you don't necessarily jump naked over the fire on a full moon under a. No, no, no. Yeah, you you weren't <laughs> far off. It was wolf moon. Yeah, yeah it was wolf moon. Um, if um, some of the guys might wouldn't know this, if you're into like the weather and stuff, there's a guy. You ever heard of Dave King? He, no. Dave King. He uh, he wrote a book. Um, let's see. We'll see ben, ben has a wee weather station at Valhalla, so he does. Oh yeah, it's actually so quite look, a good one. Weather without technology. You've probably oh seen yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. But in here, every month, right? So if you look in here, I've got February. Yes. So I can go into February and it will give me all the um, the prediction days. So, for example, in February, on the 24th of De of or the 22nd of St Peter's, um, and on and that gives it if cold will last longer, the night gives 40 days weather. So, so it's like very folklorish. Yeah, the, uh, very all weather lore is, um, yeah. but a lot some of it can be quite accurate. Um, but prediction days are kind of like a lot of saints' days as well. You know, yeah. you get um, so um, first is Saint Bridget. Yeah. 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 Um, if if why every ditch full. So that means obviously if why every ditch full. So if snow 
every ditch is full. So, um, yes. and then you've got Candlemas. Second is Candlemas, aka Purification Day. Um, cold weather Candlemas means cold weather after the feast than before Snowdrop Blossom Day. So you got general notes and other sayings. So that's a book I must get. Actually, you've got little rhymes there. So um, let's say February always brings brings the rain and thaws frozen lakes again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what it does as well, coming back to there, it will give you the, the tree of the month, the full moon, um, you know, averages temperatures and, and stuff. February, what's, what's the tree for February, did you say? Uh, Rowan. Rowan. Rowan, yeah. Yeah, yeah Rowan. Yeah. Um, and then it talks a little bit, you'll have, you'll have, it talks a bit about apogee and perigee. perigee which is like your furthest and closest of the moon. So those have yes, your... Yes, yes, yes. Um, so if, if, if people are interested, this is another old weather law book. Both these are very old books. I must get that, that's actually... Look. Actually, yeah. Yeah, and then... And then what you have to... What you should get as well if people are into this. You get these almanacs every year. They who, have who, a lot I mean, of that. Who brings weather lore books in their rucksack with them? Oh, it's because I, I have to teach this. So I have like the books, a lot of the books sort of, they sit there. But I, because I don't use, I could use the app yeah. to, to check. But so here's the night sky 2022. So that, has, almanac, all, yeah. that yeah. has your moons in it, but it has all your star. So like if it, whatever's going on in the night sky as well. So it's a good, good book. But like these are only a fiver. Yeah. Brand new, you know, so. I'll um, definitely get those, yeah. So absolutely. there's a couple of different, there's a Collins version of that, which is no, no, no different, but quite nice little books as well. So, um, extremely interesting, yeah. Stargazer's yeah. Guide. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, I wouldn't take any of these hiking me, but because I'm sitting here in a sort of course, <laughs> course element. So, my, my pack here is more like a school pack where you just forget your books in there. You know? <laughs> Excellent. So, Excellent. Get some more wood on the fire. Enjoy that, yeah. Is it time to crack open the whiskey, do you think? Oh. Yes, you know what? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know you're keen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's big. <laughs> <laughs>